see this whole set of buildings behind me is pretty much all antiques and second hands. It is absolutely insane. Good morning, you guys. It is the gloomiest, gloomiest of days today. Anyway, in other news, guest bedroom is coming along nicely. There's just, when it comes down to the styling, I'm not happy with it. So I've got the bed in place. I love the bed, it's gorgeous. I'm just waiting on the mattress to come. Um, and then I've got the secondhand wardrobe that I thrifted last year. And do you know what? I think when I bought that wardrobe, I was right, right, right at the beginning of my journey into kind of figuring out if I liked what I liked you know I was coming out of the whole everything beige and lots of black accents so coming out of that I don't think I really quite understood what kind of style I really liked and if I saw that wardrobe now I probably wouldn't buy it but yeah so basically I don't know what to do about that wardrobe I don't know whether I want to put it in the bedroom anymore and that's just the honest truth and I feel a little bit guilty about it but I just don't think I love it and I don't want to put it in the room if it's not going to be the vibe that I want it to be. Thinking in that guest bedroom, I probably don't need a whole wardrobe, but maybe some drawers would be really nice. If I looked on Facebook Marketplace, can you believe there's nothing? There's literally nothing in terms of drawers. So I'm heading out to two bigger uh, secondhand furniture shops today that I've never been to before. So I spent some time researching yesterday on Google Maps and it turns out there are a couple in Peterborough. I'm heading there and I'm hoping really hoping to find something cute for when I'm doing my vegetable picking in the summer. It's only three pounds. I'm thinking of having something like this in the hallway to have linens in. I've seen a really nice picture on Instagram. That's gorgeous, I love the legs. It's 75 pounds, I don't think that's too bad. And I love the colour of that wood, I wouldn't even need to do anything with it. trying to decide if I want to get this but I've just had a little google and these are going for like 50 quid online and it's made of real brass and it feels super heavy the first furniture shop it wasn't very good it was like a container you know one of those container stores and there wasn't really much in there then I headed over to a second charity shop called past and present and it was actually really good. I've been there before, but I totally forgot that it existed. And they had so much stuff. Like, it's a huge, huge place. And I managed to get loads of cute things. So, uh, this is my little basket of dreams. Um, so, the first thing I picked up was this. This is a dibber looks like a vampire steak i know but it's a dibber and it's used to to my understanding plant bulbs but really handy because i was thinking i needed to get one of these because i do have a lot of bulbs and when the greenhouse comes as well i'm going to be doing a lot of sort of growing seeds from scratch and stuff so that's going to come in handy and that was two pounds and do you know what i just really love the fact that it looks worn it looks used and it just looks very like antiquey vintage sort of style and then um i've got this as well now this is a known brand this isn't a new 
tool this isn't an antique tool at all at all because i see this in shops all the time i'm pretty sure they sell it in like the range and garden centers but it was only four pounds and i think it's probably not much more expensive than that but it was there and i needed one um so again you can see on the side it's got the numbers so that's the inches so one two three four so when it says plant you know your bulb this deep or sometimes you can use these for actual plants as well so if there's a small plant you can dig it out of the soil it picks up all the mud inside there and then you can put your plant in place and they're just really handy because you don't have to try and dig things out with a mini shovel but yeah that was four pounds as well and then the next thing i picked up was this basket they had so many baskets and i have been saying to my mum i was like i really want to get a basket for when it comes to like vegetable season obviously i am intending on having some quite big vegetable patches this year plus the the greenhouse so i'm hoping that i'm going to have some good hauls to show you guys but this little basket was only i think it was 10 10 quid and i really like the style of it i like the color i like the shape i like that it's quite deep so you can put quite a few bits in there and then the final thing I got, now I was disputing whether to pick this up or not. This is a brass, it says brass anyway, watering can. It was £16 and at first I thought the nozzle on it was missing and I thought, oh, well that's not very good because I'm not going to be able to like spray, you know, water on my plants. But I just loved the look of it and I kept going back to it. I walked off at one point because it was £16. I was like, I don't need you know i've got two watering cans plastic ones but i don't need this one and i have been wanting like a stainless steel one for a while but then something said to me i was like i've never seen one like this before and i genuinely haven't so i googled it and i just typed in brass watering can and some were coming up for 50 60 quid um quite a few and one of them looked exactly like this it didn't have the nozzle as well these ones they're like known as antique watering cans and it's made really well like the back of it pops on and off the inside looks fine and then it clips back into place it's got this little hook thing here which i don't actually know that what that's for um and then the handle has got like a nice bit there so it actually feels comfortable when you're holding it and yeah it's made of brass and i was having a look at it and it looks like it's still welded pretty well so it's not going to leak or anything like that but yeah when i saw the price of it i thought oh, okay i'm not going to turn this down because then i was imagining it on the side inside the greenhouse like just as a bit of decor as well because sometimes you do want your your tools to be pretty too so yeah i bought all of that i got all of that there for 32 pounds altogether and i think that's such a nice little gardening haul so i'm really happy with that i got to this place it is absolutely insane it is this huge warehouse it's called city furniture clearance limited it's a furniture wholesaler and i was talking to the lady and essentially they buy um old furnishings from particularly restaurants and pubs and hotels so when you walk in there are just stacks and stacks of chairs and tables and photo frames and just everything and I thought surely I'm gonna find a dresser in here today like surely I am I walked most of the aisles and I couldn't really see anything but on the last aisle I saw this little set of drawers this dresser and I thought oh they're really nice they are really really nice so I looked at them for a little while and I've decided like I spoke to the lady and um, we settled on 120 quid for these set of drawers these sets of drawers and then i was thinking oh god i think i've made a mistake here because i'm not going to be able to get them in my car <laughs> because they're quite um they're quite deep so i've rang my dad and bless him he was at the library and i've disturbed him and he's going to come and collect this set of drawers for me and i'm guessing he's going to have to follow me back to peterborough bless him i've disturbed him so when he gets to mine i'm going to feed him i'm going to give him some food and he can hang with me for a bit and um eek, how exciting but yeah all of that effort's paid off in the end Dad's come to the rescue. I hope, I hope. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah, Good morning, you guys. I'm just getting myself sorted. Wait, I want to put you somewhere. I'm getting myself sorted because today's the day we are going away for the next home sleep retreat. I'm <laughs> so so excited for this event i can't ugh, i can't even begin to describe so i have got a three and a half hour drive before heading up there though 
down there. It's the southeast of the country. Camba in Rye or Rye in Camba? Not sure. Sounds like it's going to be a beautiful place. So I'm looking forward to visiting there anyway. But yeah, just woke up this morning, got myself a little bit sorted. I've got my next outfit on, which I think I showed you earlier in this vlog. Love it. It's so soft. This is so buttery soft. Um, it feels really nice and I'm just getting myself my packed lunch so last night Rob came in bless him he's such a darling oh he's actually so sweet he came in and he was like right I didn't want you to stress so I've filled up the car with petrol and I've bought you a packed lunch I was like you've bought me a packed lunch he was like yeah because I know you're gonna want snacks on the drive he was like I know you're also trying to be healthy so this is what I got you. So he bought me a bottle of water, Fanta fruit twist, cause he, you know, I need a sugary drink. Prawn cocktail quavers, cause he's like, I know you want a snack, but they're quite light. So it's fine. Even though he got me the grab bag, I don't blame him. And then I've put these in here because when I get to my hotel room tonight, I'm hoping that they're gonna have tea, like a kettle in the room so I can make tea, but they never have like good biscuits. So I'm, I'm bringing digestives. I'm bringing digestives and then, a couple of packets of these fridge raiders. I've not had these in ages actually. And then he bought me some apple grape and strawberries in a little pot. And then he was like, I know you need chocolate, but instead of going wild, I just bought you two of these little bunnies. Oh, I love him so much. He's so sweet, bless him. Oh, another thing. I went to Danelm the other day with mum and they had this butter dish and I've been trying to look for a butter dish. Sorry, I'm laughing because I always go butter dish. <laughs> I was looking for a butter dish for ages and I saw this one and I think it's really cute and because it's glass and you can see through it it's not going to be too distracting so I feel like I've got quite a lot going on in this kitchen anyway but yeah so I haven't actually used this yet don't actually know how to use these I think you have to have salted butter in here which is fine because I love salty butter it's something to do with it like going bad if you have non-salted butter not in the fridge I think it goes bad quickly Anywho, I've just got to the hotel. It's the Gallivant, I think that's how you pronounce it, in Camber Rye. Oh my God, the area is so stunning. When I was driving down, I wanted to stop at every house and pull my camera out and show you guys. I went past the cutest, cutest, cutest little house. You know when you see on Instagram, cottage core, and you think, surely houses don't, like, don't exist like this, or you see a painting, or you imagine it from like a book, the way that it's described. This house was everything and more. When I go back home tomorrow, I'm gonna to try and pull over on the side and maybe show you, because it was just, oh, I feel like you need to see it. It was so cute. Anyway, I've just been greeted by Lucy at Next Home and I'm a little bit early. I'm the first to arrive. <laughs> go me, that never happens. And I'm just gonna have a bit of water, sit down, relax, chill out, and I need to put something on my lips because they are dry. <laughs> and then I think we're gonna get into a little bit of lunch and then we've got our sleep spa therapy thing happening so I cannot wait for that. the room it is stunning it's such an idyllic little hotel in such a gorgeous idyllic little area we're about to go on a beach walk as well so i'll take you on that but it's literally like a stone's throw from the beach but look how gorgeous these rooms are so you walk in and we've got this beautiful blue panel in on the side with a little ledge and it's got some books up there so you could actually go and read some stuff um, we've got some gorgeous little i love these lights all of the lights in the hotel are so gorgeous they look like the pooky ones we've got a tv Gorgeous little chest of drawers, a chair, this bed. I cannot wait to throw myself 
onto this bed, into this bed. Look at the headboard. Wow, that is stunning. I love the red on the blue and white lampshades on the bedside tables as well. The bathroom, can we just, with this bathroom, I cannot wait to come in here this evening and wind down. Look how beautiful this big mirror is. The panelling along the side, this is definitely the style sort of um, washroom that I want to do in our home. And then this shower is just everything. Look how big it is. And I love the blue subway tile. Um, and then this as well. Oh, that is so gorgeous. I love that. And then I also have spotted over this way seems to be some sort of garden like a back garden sort of thing so it looks like you can go out here we unlock it and you can go outside and there's this cute little garden space so each um hotel room has got their own little bistro set and then come up here and there's like a whole little garden space this would be so beautiful in the summertime Oh my god, it's so gorgeous. I love it. Anyway, it's freezing, so let's get back inside the room. And I'll make sure to lock it as well. I don't want any snoopers in over the night time. And get that line closed. So I just want to um, do a little talk through before I get started. Um, I'm wearing Mo's coat, bless, bless him, he gave it to me because I was freezing, like shivering cold when we were doing the sound path. So we got here, I got to meet the team, the next PR team, they're so lovely. A bunch of other people came and got to know them. We sat and just had a little bit of a really light lunch. And then we went into the sunroom, I think they call it here at the hotel. It's essentially this huge outbuilding and it's gorgeous. It's really, really well decorated, very like boho sort of natural woods and stuff vibes and we ended up having a sleep expert come in she spoke so much sense so she basically gave us like all of the science behind it she really finds that fascinating she was saying how i think we all know this but you really need to not go on your phones before you go to sleep it is the one main source of distraction and disruption when it comes to sleep you need to be getting enough sleep naps are a good thing but you need to keep them to around 20 minutes because that's like the perfect time for a nap your your room your should be your sanctuary so if your room is full of like dirty dishes dirty cups or it's just messy in general it's not going to make you sleep very well your room doesn't have to be spotless like you don't have to have nothing on your bedside tables it just has to make you happy and then if you're in a space that you're happy and you feel much more safe and relaxed and you can go to sleep really well she was saying as well you should be swapping out your bedding and your like covers and stuff much more regularly than you do so for pillows she didn't give an exact exact time in for the pillows but she said that some people haven't changed their pillows for like years and years and years and years and then they complain that they've got neck ache and back ache and stuff you should be changing these out when you feel like you know you need a bit of a refresh same with your duvet covers have a thinner one for the spring summer have a much heavier thicker one for the autumn winter and even have a like a weighted blanket on top of you she also said now i didn't realize this i change my sheets religiously once a week like every sunday me and rob change the sheets she said she should be doing it more she was like you really should be changing your sheets on your bed kind of like you change your clothes so i'm thinking she's maybe saying two or three times a week i can probably stretch it too because there are times that i get into bed and i'm like you know what i can't wait to change the sheets this weekend um, I think one is, you know, ample enough, but if there are certain times when I can change the sheets twice a week, I might do it because you know that getting in the bed feeling when you've got crunchy, soft, lovely smelling sheets and you just have the best night's sleep that night. I want to do that more often. So yeah, she said like, that's a given. And then after she spoke to us, we had a sound bath, which I've never had before. These two people came in and they had lots of like dongs and bongs and bowls and flutes and things. And they were doing all the, um, do honestly it was amazing i feel like i might have enjoyed it more if it wasn't freezing in that room because it's literally like two degrees at the minute so i was a bit cold so i was concentrating on keeping my body heat up but had i been a little bit warmer i would have been out it lasted about half an hour i would say and it was really therapeutic and they suggest that you should always use white noise um or ocean waves apparently is the best one anything that gets us to that kind of like fetal mindset because you know when you're a baby and you're in your mother's womb that's all the sounds that you hear it's all that kind of like echoey in a distance wavy sounds and that's apparently what that makes us feel the most safe so yeah anyway i just wanted to show you a couple of the bits and pieces that you can get from from next on their website so they're really lovely oh, honestly i feel so spoiled when i get to go to events like this got this little basket of goodies here i wanted to share with you 
Now I've heard of this brand before and I love a sleep mask. I've got a lot of silk ones. Oh my God, this is a contour one. So this is great because um, it goes around your eyes, but especially if you're a lashes gal, um, they're not gonna disturb your eyes as much, which is lovely. And that's in pink. And we've got some slip hair ties. Look how cute the one in the middle is. Ah, oh, it's got little flowers on. And ooh, we've got some SOS Next Nail Strengthener and Cuticle Oil. I need that look at the state of my nails at the minute. I've been biting them a lot because I'm quite anxious because when I do room makeovers, I get really stressed, like silly stress. And Rob has to tell me all the time, he's like, stop biting your nails, but I just can't help it. A lip sleeping mask, hydrating, always needed. I love um, the Laneige one. I use that every single night and it lasts a lifetime. So I really like that. So it'll be nice to see how that compares. And a lavender and vanilla ultimate hydration body cream. Let's see how that smells. I do love vanilla. Oh, that's nice. It's not, um, did I say vanilla? Yeah, I meant lavender. I do love lavender, but it's not overly lavendery. It's actually more vanilla -y, this one, which is lovely. And then something I'm ex really excited about, look how beautiful this makeup bag is. Oh, this is absolutely stunning. You know what I'm like with blue and whites. Oh my God, this is gorgeous. And this is from Next. It's their makeup bag. I'll try and leave this link down below in the description box for you. That's so lovely. I'll be able to put all my bits and pieces in there. And then, um, oh, Rob's bringing me. Can we answer the phone to him for a second? Hi. It's time to go for dinner, but I am a bit raging with myself because I haven't brought a blazer or a cardigan to throw over the top. I feel very exposed. And also I didn't bring a bra, so. This isn't fitting correctly. I mean, I love the outfit. I'm trying to just fix my hair before I head out. <laughs> looking very windswept. I brought my straighteners. I probably should really straighten my hair at the front, but I already straightened it this morning. They need a little bit of maintenance. So I'm just gonna douse the front of my hair in this and just scrape it all back. I feel like you can't go wrong. I mean, this probably looks awful from the back. I'm gonna watch this clip back and be like, oh, Charlie, as if you went to dinner like that, but I don't really care. <laughs> had the best sleep ever it was so so nice the sheets i'm going to have to tag the sheets that i set in below buttery soft unreal they're kind of like a teddy bear soft fleece blanket vibe but they're just really like it's, it's just like a really little bit it's just just enough but yeah there's oh look you can tell that i slept good in that bed um i'm gonna head to breakfast grab some food and then I think we're leaving at 11 o'clock um, and then I'm going to try to find that antique shop and then I'm probably going to go back to the farm shop. Outfit of the day, I've got my new Snide Next Birkenstocks on and I've just put my hoodie over my back because it gets a bit chilly um, out there so I don't know if I'm going to be hot or warm so I've brought it just again. Hi you guys, so I'm in Rye which some of the girls told me to come here if you like antiques and secondhand shopping. See this whole set of buildings behind me, it's pretty much all antiques and secondhand. So I'm gonna bring you inside and we'll have a little look around. But I'm so excited and also the village is super, super cute. So I'm gonna have a little walk around, grab a little coffee and maybe some snacks. And then I'm gonna head over to the garden center, which is on the drive home. But yeah, I thought I might as well whilst I'm down here because I'm never down this, like this south of the country and it looks so cute. So I'll take you in.
come home and I've got a very big haul for you. Okay, so I'm just gonna do the haul on the floor because, because why shadow? I don't know, I'm just doing it on the floor. So when I went to the antique stores in Rye, I'm obsessed, like utterly, utterly obsessed with Rye. I've said to Rob that we are going to book a staycation because honestly it's the cutest, cutest little village, area, town, I don't know what you call it, but it's so sweet. And I think in the slightly warmer months, spring, summer, it's gonna just be so much better. So we're gonna try and book a staycation. Maybe we'll get round to it this weekend. Anyway, I went to into lots of different antiques shops there. I don't know if they're all necessarily antiques, but they all give the same sort of antique vibe. So I'm gonna give you a quick haul. I went into one and I picked up this wall planter. I know it looks like absolute poop, <laughs> but imagine this screwed onto the brick wall outside of our house with some beautiful tumbling plants or geraniums or, I don't know, something hanging out of the top of it to give some level to the side of the house or wherever we put it. Instead of everything being on the floor, it just adds, you know, a bit of differentiation in aspects and height. Um, and then I also picked up two more. Um, they didn't have any more of those ones. I do prefer the previous one, but they had these and they say flower on. I got one for my mum as well, so I know that she'll want one. Then I also picked up these, like you're gonna honestly love these so much. So I picked up these. These are herb plant labels, pick sticks. They are made of what feels like iron, I wanna say, or it's, it's coated or galvanized or something, but look at the detailing on these. So I picked one up for chives, parsley, basil, thyme, and rosemary. I'll show you them properly. So there's chives. We've got parsley, so cute. We've got basil, adorable, rosemary, and time as well and they're so cute so when I do my little um vegetable patch again or when I just eventually put my herbs into the ground I'm going to spoke these next to them so it just adds a little you know pizzazz to the area very much not needed it's not necessary but I just thought it was so cute um I also picked up this tiny little planter this is actually going to be kept indoors you could probably have it outside but I'm going to keep this inside I love the look of the faux galvanized steel but I'm going to put some sort of plant inside it um, maybe like a mini lavender plant for inside the house um, and have it somewhere like the kitchen or wherever i can kind of move it around but i'm just really trying to get some more flowers and fresh foliage into the house because i think rooms just kind of look a little bit they can look bland without them but once you bring in plants honestly I'm, I, I don't know why i didn't jump on this trend earlier because i used to hate having plants in the house i was like green no too bright <laughs> but now i love it i also picked up from a different antique store these um brackets so i don't know what they're made of it doesn't say but when i tell you these feel so heavy i feel like they surely are iron but they're so pretty i loved the detailing on them when i did the kitchen makeover last year i tried to find some detailed brackets like this and if you go on etsy or even ebay they are so expensive so the two of these came to 18 pounds i thought for any projects in the future these will be nice and i really like the design on those i also picked up this now i've already got one of these but it does say flower on it and i keep it in the kitchen on the shelves but i saw some inspiration on pinterest for the guest bedroom where someone had one of these pots just stacked on top of the dresser and because we do have a dresser in there now i feel like this will be a really nice touch so i decided to pick it up it actually does come with a lid and it's super super clean inside so um yeah i could actually use it to store stuff but i think i'm either going to use it just to sit like this or for some stems or foliage flowers in the future to dress up the guest room a little bit then i also picked up this <laughs> again it doesn't look like much looks like a battered old bucket and that is exactly what it is <laughs> bless him the, the man that sold it to us um in the shop called a lovely old bucket it was 28 he brought it down to 24 and then he gave it to me for 22 i mean it's clearly been used for like cement or something inside it's got quite a lot of dust but it's proper like look at the hoops on the sides of the bucket and i'm pretty sure it's galvanized it's got a little bit of rust in on the back oh, it just feels so lovely and i'm intending on using that outside to plant some flowers inside i always see pictures of lavender coming out of those buckets or loads of tulips or daisies in the springtime so i'm hoping to do a bit of a bulb lasagna and maybe see some stuff come out of there if not this year then next year but 
that's what I'm learning with gardening. You have to be ahead of the game. So if you plant stuff this year, it's unlikely you'll see anything from this year or even the next year. It takes time. So um, I'm really, really hoping to just plant so many bulbs, just get so much stuff in the ground this year so that next year and the year after, I'm just like, oh, I really want it to get a country cottage vibe. Um, and then I went to a garden centre, is that everything? Yeah, I went to a garden centre on, on the drive home as well. It had all of these pots for sale for 4 99 now, yeah, really, really pretty. Um, again, this is gonna live outside and just have some really pretty, I don't know, some sort of flower in there, maybe daisies, or I'm just imagining tulips and everything, but obviously it's already March, so tulips are gonna die back soon. Um, and then also from the garden center, let's pull this down. So while sticking with pots, I don't know if you've seen, there are some really beautiful little um, terracotta pots that people use, especially indoors now. And the garden centre I went to had these. Now, they're not the exact ones that I like the look of. The ones I like have got kind of like a scalloped edge almost, and they're normally a little bit taller and more narrow than this. But I thought these were pretty close. And I'm imagining some crocuses in here on the dining table or just potted around randomly in the house, especially now that we've got a couple of rooms done up can't wait to breathe a bit of life into them with flowers and stuff so yeah they were 4 99 each so I got two of that type and then I got two more plain small ones these ones are so diddy and I thought they were adorable for plants I went a little bit crazy so I already have a lot of plants outside that I need to get around to planting but these ones are mainly indoor ones so well they're not indoor but I'm going to use them indoor so I've, I've bought these um large flowered blue crocuses another type of crocus which is this um, mixed species. I also picked up these alliums. These are the purple sensations. These ones come through in May, so we've got a little while, um, but that will be exciting to see that flourish. I don't know whether I'm going to plant this one straight outside or if I might keep it indoors and keep it in a sunny spot. I also picked up a couple of random smaller plants. So this one is a Brita Florado Blue Blush by Cole. Sorry, I'm useless with pronouncing the Latin names for them but again this is a perennial and then i also picked up this this is a lizomachia also known as goldilocks i can pronounce that one probably this is trailing stem so kind of like ivy um it's going to just cascade and flow down and it gives off some yellowy green leaves um, and then i also picked up this plant now i've never ever ever heard of this plant before but i saw it on instagram it's a hellebore i hope i'm pronouncing that right again this is the harvington Piketty. It's just a really pretty flower on the end of it. So it actually usually flowers between winter and spring, it says. So we're probably not gonna get much come through it here. But again, it is perennial. When I went to the next event yesterday, I was so blown away and inspired by the way that their gardener does their flowers in pots inside the restaurant and around the hotel. It gave me so much inspiration, honestly. I also picked up some of these narcissi, narcissums. I picked two up in this Marie Diamond, this kind of pale yellow. It's almost a white. And then I also picked up it in Grand Salil Door, which is this kind of more vibrant yellow. Then the last part that I picked up was this. How pretty is this? This is a fern. So, so nice. I think this is one of my mum's favorite plants. So where I want to have this, when I eventually do my dressing room, makeup island desk, I'd love to have this in a pot on the middle of the makeup island, raised up a little bit. Final pot that I picked up, this is actually from Home Sense. So by this point, I've left the garden center and the antique stores. I've driven halfway home and I popped into a TK Maxx, not a Home Sense, a TK Maxx. And I saw this pot. Now, remember earlier when I said the other pots I bought weren't quite the ones that I liked, but this one is. So look at this wavy detail around the top. So cute. They only had one left. Honestly, if they'd have had 10, I would have bought all of them in different sizes and um, this one was actually a little bit cracked as well so i hope it's going to be okay but it didn't have a price on it but when i got it to the till they gave it to me for 3.99 i'm so excited about this so this again is not going to fit properly but imagine that hanging out the top of that sort of pot that is just a delight darling but yeah love 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 that pot and then the final things that i picked up these were also from tk maxx now I've said before I don't like to buy um, I don't like to buy paintings that are actually prints because they they're not real oil and you know they don't always look 100% authentic but 
This is the second time I've seen these in TK Maxx or HomeSense and I was drawn to the exact same picture again so I decided to just pick it up this time because I really really like it and it doesn't matter if it's not a real one. I haven't managed to find any in antiques or secondhand or charity shops that um, gave me this vibe that I was looking for. So I ended up picking up this gorgeous gorgeous kind of faux, it's got a little bit of texture but it it hasn't got that kind of like oil flick that you see with um when when you see oil paintings they've got like the globs and gloops of oil and sometimes they also add like a medium on top of a print they add little bits in sections to make it look like it's more textured they haven't done it on this the canvas is coming through but it's very much a flat picture but the, the colors in this i know they look so muted and quite dull but i absolutely love that and i love that i think they're peonies i just love the picture i love it and the frame is not too shabby either it's got that kind of woven linen-y canvas border that you see in a lot of antique um frames and then it's obviously got this fake it's plastic but this fake kind of gold gilded frame as well but i love this this was 25 pounds which i think is quite a steal because it's a really large picture and then i also picked up this little one which again I thought was so cute I nearly picked up a different one which was kind of on a black background with some you know much more um they kind of just looked a bit scary flowers and I did like it but I chose this one in the end because the other one's frame was gold and I didn't love that so this one's frame is a lovely walnut brown and again it looks like they're peonies if not maybe roses in a little vase love the colors there's a little bit of orange mustard peeking through there with some pink and some green and this one was 19.99 so i just thought you know what it might not be real art it might not be vintage it might not be have any resale value but it makes me happy and i just want to get some pictures up in this house because through all of the room makeovers that i've done i think i've only added frames to the office so far and once I put those up, it really transformed that space because it brings your eye up, adds colour, adds texture. And I love the use of all different frames as well. So like that one's square and the other one's oval. They'll look so lovely paired together. So I really hope that you enjoyed today's vlog. I think it was quite a long one. Hopefully you stuck around for the most part of it. Um, you can see that we've got lots of plants and flowers. I'm really hoping to get a gardening video up for you guys soon where we dig out some beds and get some bulbs and plants planted. I've got lots of roses to put up outside as well, as well as some trellises. I've even got some obelisks that I want to get set up as well. Um, and yeah, there's just lots of fun to be had. So I also, hopefully we'll be calling the garden center to drop off my my greenhouse soon because i really really want to get to that soon because it's now mid-march i don't want to have that lingering for any any more past kind of early to mid-april because i think that's a time when you should really start sowing things or planting things or help them give them their early boost before the summer comes around um but yeah i hope that you enjoyed the video as always and um i can't wait to see you to the next one if you don't already make sure to subscribe and go and follow me on my instagram underscore home of shadow because you can catch up with me more day to day there but yeah take care of yourselves guys and i'll see you in the next one bye